Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. As of Tuesday, it is now officially Winter's Day in Guild Wars 2, and this will carry on until January 2nd. Like with my 2018 Halloween video and future festival coverage, this is mostly just going to be talking about the new things that came in with Winter's Day, but if this is your first year experiencing Winter's Day and you have no idea what you're doing, I'll be leaving a link in the description to my original Winter's Day video that covers a lot of the activities that come with this event. Just like previous years, you'll be able to participate in the Toy Apocalypse or a tower defense style game, the Bell Choir Ensemble, which is sort of like Guitar Hero, and I'm terrible at it, Winter Wonderland, which is a jumping puzzle with three paths depending on the difficulty you want to play, and if you just want to fight over gifts and throw snowballs at each other, there's always Snowball Mayhem or the Snowball based PvP activity this year. Remember also that instead of Lion's Arch, like with Halloween, you're going to be doing most of these activities in Divinity's Reach at the Crown Pavilion Waypoint. Since Winter's Day is part of the festival system, there's also an achievement that once you complete your daily will eventually get you some new skins. In other words, there's a Winter's Day daily and every time you complete that five times, you'll be given one new skin. I'll be showing these off as I'm talking about it, but as you can see, these are basically just your regular weapons covered in wrapping paper. And while that's not my personal taste, I could understand why people might go for these. Newly added to the gem store this year, we have a mini trailblazer roller beetle, which is again just a mini pet, but it does look pretty cool, as well as a sun temple gecko springer skin. And this actually turns your springer or your bunny into a gecko, which I just think is amazing, and I'll probably end up buying this thing. Along the same lines, there there are some new Black Lion weapon skins if you want to go for those. Of course, you'll need to be buying some Black Lion keys or farming them, whatever your method of choice. But once you have at least one ticket scrap, you could head over to the vendor in Lion's Arch and you could see there are plenty of skins to choose from. And this year they've opted to make the skins a music theme or an orchestral theme. So every one of the weapons will be some sort of instrument. Nearly all of the activities available this year were available in previous years, but there is one exception, and that's a new mini raid called the Secret Lair of the Snowmen. Now this was actually something available in Guild Wars 1, so it's really cool to see it come back. And while they're calling it a mini raid, this really isn't something you should be all that stressed about, as it's not all that difficult to complete. The reasoning behind calling it a mini raid, I think, is that it was designed for a 10-man group, and while you may face a little trouble with the boss, you're probably not going to struggle all that hard getting there. If you head southwest from the Crown Pavilion waypoint you'll eventually come up on what looks like a dungeon entrance or a portal and this is where you'll need to go to get started. I recommend using looking for group to get a party together and once everybody's ready you'll be able to enter the instance. I'm not going to do a complete guide on this encounter but I will give some context so you know what you're doing when you enter. At the very beginning you're going to want to interact with some snowballs and you'll see that it gives you your special action hotkey with three ammo. You and your party should begin throwing as many snowballs as humanly possible at Jolly Donnie or the snowman who's frozen right next to where you came in and once he's been hit enough times the event will actually start. From here you're just going to be escorting this snowman to the other side of this instance and as long as your party can handle a couple of veteran enemies you're going to be okay until you get to the boss. Just before the boss though you'll go over a bridge and it's here that you're going to want to make sure you look at the ground and avoid any of the ice that's splintering out towards you as it will chill you slowing your movement. Movement. After the bridge, you'll just need to take out a few more groups of enemies as you make your way to a open room with a pit, and in that pit, you'll see the final boss or Freezy. Now, once your party's ready, everyone should head down into that pit, and you'll just need to damage him to 0% of his health. Now, that's not the end of the encounter. Instead, he'll begin regenerating his health and spawning something called a Freezy Frozen Heart that you'll need to throw snowballs at. To get those snowballs, you'll either need to defeat the enemies that spawn around the perimeter of this room, or you can wait on your snowman friend to generate some on the ground next to you. Hit Freezy's frozen heart as many times as you can, and once the boss is back to full health, you'll just need to rinse and repeat this until the end of the fight. You'll be needing to pay attention to whether or not Freezy has health, because when he does, he'll target a player or fixate on a player, and when this happens, he'll shoot a big frozen beam at them, and at the same time, a nearby snowball will spawn and start chasing that player as well. Your best bet here is just to avoid dragging the beam 
beam as well as the snowball into the rest of your party, and as long as you keep these few things in mind, you should have a pretty good experience on your first run through. Completing this or any of the other activities during Winter's Day is bound to reward you with some Winter's Day gifts, and opening those is going to get you some consumables, some skins, and this year there are actually a few new skins, but they're kind of the same skin in a way. By opening up the Winter's Day gifts, you're probably going to find yourself getting a Giver's Candy Cane or a Giver's Winter Green Weapon Skin. Now while these skins span across daggers, pistols, scepters, and swords, they're all essentially just candy cane replacements for whatever weapon you currently have equipped. The only real difference here is that one is red and one is green, so if you have some extra transmutation charges and you really want to feel the spirit of Winter's Day, feel free to reskin some of your weapons. Another reminder for Winter's Day is much like those achievements that build together to get you a gift wrapped weapon skin, you'll also be able to work towards the Winter's Day annual achievement and by completing at least seven of the eight total achievements, you'll be awarded with a new mini. And to go with that new mini raid we got, it's actually Mini Freezy's Heart. And that guys is actually pretty much it for the updates for Winter's Day 2018. There weren't a ton of things added, but I do think it's cool that they seem to be adding something new to each of these festivals every year. And not just skins, but we actually got a little bit of a mini raid or mini dungeon this year, so I'm not complaining about that. If this is your first ever Winter's Day and you're a little confused as to what I'm talking about, be sure to check out that earlier video. And for those of you guys looking for a little extra something to do, your best bet is to turn to your achievements and try to get some of those that you didn't get last year. To everyone out there, happy Winter's Day, and I'll see you in the next one.